Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be showing you how to deploy your agent on Shopify and how to easily sync up all of your Shopify product data into your Voiceful agent. So you can do things like provide high powered product recommendations, check order status, uh, and a whole bunch of other items within Voiceflow that really connect it to your Shopify store. Now for this tutorial, we are going to be using an app called Streamline Connector that is a Shopify app built by community members of the community uh, that handled and make this process super easy. So let me just show you what the end product looks like, uh, and then we're going to get into it. So here we've got a e-commerce store called Drake Waterfowl. So they uh, do eight figures in revenue in the States, uh, tons of different products that are in their catalog. And so if I go ahead to their voiceful agent in the bottom corner, and this is live, so you can actually go ahead and test this out. So you can do a ton of stuff in here, like ask a policy questions, like what's your return policy, check my order status, et cetera. But the one thing I want to show off here, which I think is super cool, is actually getting a product recommendation. So let's go and ask it something like, I'm going fly fishing in the winter. What are some items? Maybe let's make it less. What are some hats um, you would recommend? And now this is going to send this query to the product database. So all the information that was synced between VoiceFlow and Shopify. So look through it, find the best items, going to generate an entire summary about why those items are actually good for what I'm looking for. And then it's going to generate a carousel that allow me to click and buy. Them. And awesome. So you can see that it generated three different hats. So it's got the uh, waterfowler hat, Gives me an example of why it's water resistant, insulated, same thing with a Gore-Tex hat, a non-typical camel fleece beanie. And I can see them all over here. Mm, this one looks good, looks like what I want for the winter. And I'm gonna click that, it's gonna take me right to the product page and allow me to actually add to cart and check it out. So super, super powerful. Um, the client that's using this is getting a ton of questions answered. It's answering a ton of support tickets. It's handling things like returns, like emails, like questions. And it's also actually pushing new sales for people who are coming to the website and trying to figure out what to buy. It's basically like having a sales agent or someone who's actually in store that can give you recommendations on what you're looking for and answer those tough questions that a lot of the time you just don't get the chance to answer really quickly for your customers. So without further ado, let's hop into VoiceFlow. We'll get a template. We'll start building this up and we'll actually sync all the data in this tutorial. So head over to the next video and we'll get started. So to get started, we're going to use a retail template that has all of the flows pre-built for you so you can get started quickly. Now, the first thing you want to do is get your data from Shopify into VoiceFlow. Now, there's two ways to do this. There's an easy way, which is using an app called Streamline Connector. And the other way is directly. So if you are a developer or you have developer experience, you can set this all up yourself. So really quick note, on the direct way, there's two things you need to do. So the first one is you can go into the knowledge base and you can add in your data sources, so your URLs. So you only want to add in your policy pages this way, not your product pages. If you try to just scrape the web pages on your Shopify store, it's going to come out with really garbage results and you're not going to be able to get the high quality answers that you're going to be looking for. Your product information is going to need to go through an API called the table API. This allows you to take structured JSON data, like a list of products and all the variants, and then put them into the knowledge base in a way that the AI can accurately look through them. This does take some development work to set up. And so that's why for this demo, we're going to use Streamline Connector. It's an app that is basically set up to do all of this automatically, syncs up all of your product data from Shopify, your pages, everything into VoiceFlow into your agent and formats it in a way that works really well with this template. It uses the API to get it in there and then actually syncs it up on a weekly or bi-weekly basis and gives you a bunch of options to be able to choose what you want to send or not. So we're going to use Streamline Connector for this video, but if you're a developer, you can do the other way as well. So the first thing I want to do is go to apps and I'm going to search an app called Streamline Connect. Great. I'm just going to search the Shopify app store and you can see right over here, Streamline Connector Voice Flow. This is what we want to click. And this is going to allow us to sync all of our product data with Voice Flow, in addition to our orders and a whole bunch of other information. Let's install this and go through the process. So hit install and that's going to set this up on our store. So now that Streamline Connect has been installed, let's go and actually connect our VoiceFlow agent here. So I need my API key and the chatbot name. So the chatbot name is VoiceFlow e-commerce agent. And the API key is a, right over here in this section, integration, API key. We're going to copy that and just drop it in here. And so now this is connected to our VoiceFlow e-commerce agent. So let's go in and hit manage data. So I want to do a couple things. The first is I want to sync over our product data. So you'll see that right now in the in my knowledge base, I don't have any data. And so the really important thing about product data is that it needs to be structured in a tabular format. And so Streamline Connect does this via our API. And so you can build this again yourself if you want to. It's in our documentation. It's called upload table data. And if I go ahead and hit send products, I have a couple options here. So let's send all active products. And we'll do this on a weekly basis. 
And we have two options, so searchable fields and metadata fields. Searchable fields are what a user can actually search when they're typing in requests or questions or recommendations. And then metadata fields are the information we're returning from the knowledge base so that we can save into things like a carousel. My recommendation would just be to leave this as is, sync up the title and description for search, and then keep these for your metadata. This is what you're going to use to make sure that when we do the product recommendations, it's only looking at product and it's not looking at like, you know, our policies. So keep that as it is. And let's go ahead and hit confirm and save. So now this is going to sync it over to VoiceFlow. Um, it's just going to be called this dash zero. Could have named it, but I didn't. The next thing I want to do is let's go and send pages. So if you have a page like a, your order, your, your policy page, FAQs, you can just go ahead and add those in here and then actually just hit add. We don't have any stages because our, our website is just a test website. So now if I go ahead and check, this is successful. So if I go and look at my knowledge base, I just give it a quick refresh. So I can see that it's synced up here. And if I click this, I've only got 14 items in my store, but you can see here that it's synced up all of the different items. So if I go ahead and ask it something like, do you have any cool socks? It's going to go ahead and look through the products in our database and be able to come up with an answer for us. So now that we've got our information all synced up into uh, our agent here, what we're going to do is we're also going to add in some of our pages. So I've got a return policy page, so we can just add that in. So let's hit confirm and save. So you can see in voice flow, this just synced over. And so if I click on it, I've got all the actual content for the page itself. And I can now ask it something like, how long is your term policy? Great, 30 days. So now that we've got our product data, which is over here, and our like policy or return information over here, we're going to go into actually setting up our workflows. So now on the home page, we have a number of options. So Someone who's using this agent can uh, go through and actually click order status, recommendations, store policies, et cetera, or they can straight up just start asking questions like, again, what is your return policy? Or they can ask questions even about products, like what are your socks made of? And that'll be able to also pull information from the product or, or the knowledge base. And so this is already a decent agent out of the box. But really what makes it special is a number of the flows that have been built out for you here that really leverage the way that Streamline like Connector pulls all the data into VoiceFlow that you can recreate on your own or just use the app for. So getting started in order status, you'll see that there's actually a function in here to be able to retrieve the orders from your Shopify store. So Streamline allows you to actually access this. So all you need to do is go into send orders. You're going to copy this ID and you're going to go into your agent, just drop it in here into the request URL section, and now you're good to go. So let's go ahead and try this out. So let's see where your order is, and let's just grab a quick order from our store here. Looks like Kimberly made one uh, recently. So Kim, let's grab your email and put it in here. So now it's being able to send this over to Streamline Connect. It's taking a look through our orders, and it's able to actually find the most recent order that we placed. So it says 1175 out for delivery view order. Awesome, super, super cool. Now let's check out uh, another flow, which is the product recommendations flow. And just a quick note is that again, you can do this directly if you wanna use uh, a Shopify function, which we've created here. So this allows you to directly connect to Shopify if you're not using Streamline Connect. You do have to go through and actually set up a Shopify the connection inside Shopify and get an access token, but we'll include a link to a tutorial that walks you through how to do that. But again, if you're using Streamline Connect, it just sets it up really quickly for you. So now the other one is our product recommendations. So this one is more complex and this is really where uh, your agent starts to stand out and can provide really accurate recommendations for people. So we'll walk you through a bit of what's happening here. So the beginning, we're just asking a user if they wanna see personalized recommendations or bestsellers. These bestsellers are manual. So this is a manual carousel. You can go and add your bestsellers in here and it'll be the same thing every time. The personalized recommendation is where we actually start using the knowledge that's in the knowledge base from the products. So if I say, you know, what's the gear that we're looking for, you're going to want to come in here and obviously customize this. So let's go, what's the voice flow swag? Tell us what voice flow gear you're looking for. When someone asks a question, it goes through this function. Now this function basically looks at the knowledge base and it fetches uh, all of the different product information that we uploaded. And it only looks at information with a specific tag called the product data, which you can do when you actually upload data, but Streamline takes care of that for you. And so when you do this, it returns the three most relevant products to your search. It turns them into a carousel, and then it passes it over to this AI step. 
Now this AI step is looking at your question that you asked here, user question, and then it's looking at the products that were pulled from the knowledge base, and then it actually creates a recommendation around that. And then finally, this step here, or this button here, this is what actually renders a carousel. So let's quickly look, take a look through it and see what this looks like. What is some good stuff for the winter? Let's see what it pulls out. Awesome. So I can turn off my debug mode here. And great. So it was able to go through and actually pull out a couple of items. So it found the three items, it passed to this AI step, and it actually provided the recommendation. So you're obviously going to want to put your company name here. So I would change waterfowl to voice flow. And you know, the winter season, blah, 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 crucial. Here's a fleece pullover, here's a water bottle, and here's some cruise socks. Now, obviously, if you have way more products, it'll provide better recommendations. We've only got 10 products in here, but honestly, it did pretty good. And right away, you can see that all of the carousels actually have the image, the price, the title, as well as the description. So that's all being formatted in this function over here in code. And now if I click on this, it's going to open up the actual Shopify page. So super cool. One quick note here is that this carousel step here, this custom action, this is what's actually rendering the custom carousel. So again, if you haven't actually used voice flow before, I'd recommend you watch the previous tutorial on building a support agent. It'll tell you everything that you need to know about voice flow. This is just a quick run through of this template and how to use it. So this step here actually renders the carousel that we generated in the code. So that's what allows the carousel to be dynamic. It's cause it's being generated um, in this function whenever we fetch items. So it's different every time. And then this step just renders it. So you can see here in the action body, I've got payload. That's what the function is putting out. Now there's two options here, default and click URL. So default, there's also this option here, stop on action. So if I click stop on action in production, and you won't see this in the actual agent because this custom action step is really a production step. But in production, stop on action would mean that it stops at the carousel and it waits for a user to do something, either type something in or click a button. If the user clicks a button, it'll go down this click path. Or if the user types something, it'll jump somewhere else in the agent. Now, if this is off like it is right now, then what would happen is that you would show the carousel and you would immediately move on to the default path, which would just go to this next part. Then if a user clicked a button, it would basically go down this button path. So here it just loops back to the same thing. So this allows you to actually have a bit more granular control to say maybe you want the carousel to appear and if a user clicks on a button, you're gonna take them somewhere else and upsell them some products. So this is what allows you to determine what happens after a user clicks one of the buttons on the URL, you can take them down a custom path. So for this purpose, I'm just gonna hook it back up here and then kind of proceed forward. And so that's it for this flow. The other flows are pretty straightforward. So submit a ticket, we go through in depth on our course on building a support agent. So I would check that out. It's the exact same flow here. This is sending it to Zendesk. So you need to put in your Zendesk domain, email and API key. But uh, we have functions for Freshdesk. You can build one for Gorgeous as well. Any support system you're using, VoiceL can connect with and actually send a ticket over. The last one is just a rewards program. If you have one, you can keep this in. If not, you can actually just remove this whole flow. And then finally, we've got policies. Um, this is just giving you a bit more, if you have more policies, this is useful. If someone has more detailed questions, they can go into this flow and ask it, but it'll be able to also answer policy questions just right off the bat if they type it at the front, like we did at the beginning. So that's the quick overview of this template. Again, I highly recommend watching our other course on building a support agent in VoiceFlow, which is gonna show you everything around capturing information, buttons, et cetera. And so check that out. Or if you wanna just get started quickly, you can use this template, use Streamline Connect, get all your data in there. Next up, we are gonna go and actually put this in our Shopify store, get it up and running and show you where you need to put it in the code and what happens if you, you know, it's not working and, and modifying some of the CSS. So we're gonna hop into that next, but let us know if this was helpful and you can find this template, I will link it down below. Okay, so now that we've synced all our product data in there, let's actually go ahead and add our chatbot to Shopify. So the first thing you wanna do is hit publish. Now this is gonna make our assistant live and whenever we make changes, you just wanna hit publish and that's gonna automatically update the agent. So while this is publishing, we wanna go ahead and actually add the web chat into our code. So if I go to the settings I, over here, integration web chat, this is the script that I want to get. So let's copy this. And you'll see that there's some basic customization over there. To learn how to do more customization, we have a course on customizing the web chat. So you can go check that out. But we're gonna to go to our voiceful store here hit the three buttons, go to edit code. And we wanna make sure that we are in theme.liquid. So once we're in here, if you scroll down, you wanna find the body tag. So I can see it here. 
And I want to add that below. So I can see there's already a script here. I'm just going to add it right above. And there we've got our voice flow widget. So if I hit save here, let's go and preview store. Hmm. And it looks like it hasn't appeared. Let's just quickly inspect and see if there was an error or if something is hiding it. So if I go down to the bottom here, I can see that it did load the voice flow chat. And if I open this up, it looks like its display is set to none. So if I check that box off, then I can see the widget appear. So this means that there's something in my theme that's overriding the widget or making it hide itself. So we're going to go in and add one more line of code to our theme just to make sure that the widget is actually showing. And this may vary depending on the theme that you're using, but I'll include this snippet code below this tutorial as well. So let's go back to our store here. And what we want to do is we want to go right to the top where the head tag is. And this is where we're going to add the following code. So what this is doing is it's just uh, saying that we want to make the voice little chat widget visible and have that as um, a core element of the style. So you'll see that there's other styles in here that are setting certain rules to the website, which might override. So putting this at the top, make sure that it isn't overridden. So I'm going to hit save. Let's go preview store now. And bam, we have our chat widget here in the bottom corner. So let's go ahead and try out that product recommendation flow. Let's get a recommendation. Let's go personalized. And I'll say I'm looking for cool socks. So it's going to go and find three most relevant products. I don't have many products on the store, so it's probably going to come up with socks and two others, but it'll be able to give an explanation as to why it chose these three to be able to provide to me. And if I go ahead and hit socks, more info, that's going to go and take me to my socks page with the chat widget right here. So that's how you apply to Shopify. You basically just add it into the theme.liquid file, and then you can add the CSS override at the top. Um, but that should get you up and going. And then I would highly recommend checking out our other tutorials on further customizing the web chat, building a support agent to understand how to really build out a strong AI agent for your e-com store, helping your customer answer all the questions that they have in a really quick and easy way, helping them find products and helping them figure out where their order is, alleviating your support team from all the tickets that are created.